Okay, I'm running a VM of Backtrack 5, and we're going to start learning how to use Metasploit and just some Metasploit basics. And we're going to try to run an exploit on a vulnerable system. And I've got a remote desktop connection to a vulnerable Windows XP machine, and I'm going to run this IceCast 2.0.1 um, server. It's a streaming music server and I'll start the server up and this is um, this server this icecast server has uh, known vulnerabilities in it so we'll just start it up right here and then we'll see if we can exploit this system with backtrack using metasploit so we'll go back to backtrack and the first thing I do is make sure that I have internet connectivity so I'm gonna ping Yahoo okay and I can successfully ping Yahoo and then I'm going to see if I can ping the computer that I'm going to exploit. Okay, so so I need to be able to ping the computer that I'm going to exploit. So I can, so that's perfect. Okay, so I can close this terminal. Actually, I'm going to need to open up another terminal and I'm going to run uh, Metasploit right here from the terminal by typing in msf console. All right, we'll let that takes a second for it to open up. I'll open this up a little bit. All right, and there's the Metasploit framework, the console. It tells you the version right here. It tells you how many exploits are loaded into it. It's got 684 exploits. It's got 217 different payloads. So I'm going to search for the exploit that works with IceCast. So I'll just search for IceCast. OK, and there it is, Windows HTTP IceCast header. So all I need to do is type use Windows HTTP Ice cast header. I'll type, I'll hit enter, and now you can see that it's been loaded into the MSF console, right? And so now all I need to do is say show payloads. And it'll show me a listing of all the payloads that will work with this exploit. And I can just scroll through them. I'm going to look for, I'm going to need a Windows, first of all, not a Linux payload. I'm going to need a Windows payload. And I'm going to try to go for a, a popular one, a very powerful one, the Windows Meterpreter. So I'm going to see if I can run a Meterpreter on this vulnerable client. So I'll look for that, Windows Meterpreter, and we'll say bind TCP. Okay, so I'll go down here, and I'll say set payload Windows MET tab, nope, no tab. All right, interpreter bind underscore TCP. All right, and I'll hit enter. And you can see that it's been loaded in, so we've got a payload. So we're going to try to exploit the system, and then once we've exploited it, we're going to try to run a payload, which in this case will be a interpreter, right? And Let's see here, we're going to need to set the options. So we'll say show options. And it tells you all the options that you need. It looks like required, yes, we need a remote host IP address here. And we're going to also need one for the payload options. So let's just set that. So set our host and then the IP address that we're targeting. Okay, done. Now if I do show options again, you'll see that the remote host has been loaded in. So that's perfect. So now that that's done, all we have to do is type exploit and hit enter, and it'll run the exploit against the machine. You can see it's starting, and the interpreter session one has been opened. So I've got a interpreter prompt here, which means it worked and I'm running Meterpreter now on the client. And if you want to know, all I have to do here is type shell, and it should drop me into the shell 
right? Program files, icecast, win32. So I'm actually running this exploit through the process, through the icecast2 server process right there. I can do a, a dir command and look at the directory of the Windows XP machine, right? See icecast there running? So there it is. There's a C drive. I'm running Linux, and right here I'm looking at a Windows C drive, all right? So I can search around and look through all the files on the, the vulnerable machine. We've now victimized the machine, and we have um, administrative access to the command prompt. I'm going to exit out of this command prompt, though, and it's going to drop me back into a interpreter shell. And once I'm in a interpreter shell, I can type help to see all of the interpreter commands that I can use and run against this victim machine, right? So there's a whole list, ton of commands that I can run. And right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the processes running on this victim machine. So I'm going to say PS and run a PS to see the processes running. And I can see all the processes running on that XP victim machine that we've now taken over. You can see here that one of the processes that is running is LSAS, right? And LSAS is the local security authentication subsystem service, right? And it's the PID, the process ID is 700. So if I could get into this process and migrate from this IceCast server, that's where we're, we've basically um, co-opted, and migrate into this LSAS.exe process, I'll have complete access to the system. I'll have access to everything. So all I'm going to do to migrate into that process is type migrate and then the process ID which was 700 and hit enter and now the interpreter and our bind has migrated over and so now we're running inside of LSAS which is the security subsystems with Windows. So we're basically in deeper than even an administrator, right? So that's excellent. Now